So this question is a bit longer, uh, too long to fit on just the title screen. So I'm going to go ahead and read the question in its entirety so I can make sure to answer all of it. Uh, it reads, I understand that in Jewish tradition, there was a lot more heed taken in ensuring the accuracy of the text. But how likely is it that some of these books in the Hebrew Bible, whether it be from the Torah, the prophets, or the writings, uh, that they could have been written as pseudonymous text and been incorporated into the Jewish tradition. Similar, similarly to how six of the 13 letters of Paul are considered forgeries, and the same with the Gospels. Was this something that was probable during the Jewish times? So the first thing we need to address is that there was... Uh, more heed taken in preserving the accuracy of the Jewish text. This idea comes from the compilation of the Masoretic text, where uh, a group of Jews were collecting these different writings to create the official Jewish canon. And this was to make sure that their writings weren't like these ever-changing writings of the Christian Bibles to make sure that these were the authentic writings as accurate and close to original as possible. This is the original text. The problem is that when they were doing this and making these claims about how they were making the official Jewish canon, this was in... It was sometime, I can't remember the exact century, but it was after we already had canonical Christian Bible. So this wasn't like 3rd or 4th century BC. This was after the uh, Christian canon had been established and Bibles were being essentially mass produced and spread throughout the Roman Empire. So the Jews were fairly late to the game when it came to creating their canon. And they weren't using the oldest text. They were using texts that were fairly young at the time. So what they were working with wasn't originals. No one even knows when these originals were written or could even find originals. Originals didn't exist by that time. So there was a problem right away. They had no originals, nor did they have any method of finding out if any of their text resembled original writings. The second problem is they weren't actually taking particular efforts to ensure that no changes were being made. The exact opposite was the case. If they came across something that was inconvenient, such as uh, the passage in Deuteronomy 32.8, where it says that the great high god, El Elyon, divides up the nations of the world among his sons, and he gives Israel to his favorite son, Yahweh, when they came across passages like that, they didn't take any heed in preserving them. These passages were uncomfortable to their new monotheistic theology, so they changed them. When they found things where Yahweh did something evil, they changed it to Satan. And so... They weren't actually trying to preserve the integrity of the text. If their beliefs contradicted the scripture, then when they copied the scripture, scripture was changed to fit their beliefs, the same way that Christians were doing. So their texts were, when they were being replicated, were no more accurate than Christian copies were at the time. Now, the idea of could any of the writings in the Hebrew Bible be pseudonymous, basically be written under a fake name. You see this a lot with uh, the writings of like the prophets. You have things like Ezra, Nehemiah, Isaiah, and so forth. Were these you know, were any of these texts possibly written by someone other than the prophets whose names are attached to that book? Uh, 
And the answer is, all of them were. None of the text in the Hebrew Bible can be traced to any specific author. And many of these are just named for who the main character of the book was. Often these texts were compiled over decades or perhaps even centuries and are made up of multiple different documents. We have multiple documents that went into making uh, the book of Ezra, the book of Isaiah, the book of Nehemiah. So what happened was a, a prophetic text would be written. Often these were written centuries after the events they portrayed. And then another text concerning the same prophet would be written. And another text would be written. And these may be written by completely different people, decades apart. People that may not have even been alive at the same time as one another. Then these texts would all be combined, chopped up, mixed around, and reassembled to create one giant book, such as the book of Isaiah. And so, if there's a text in the Hebrew Bible with a name attached to it, that is an anonymous text. The name attached to it is the book's title, not the author. So, all of the books of the Old Testament that are presumably written by anyone whose name is on that book, they are all pseudonymous text. The same way we have with the Pauline forgeries that are in the New Testament. And this was not only something that was widespread in the ancient world, but often it was acceptable. And the way this worked was if you wanted to make a, a prophetic text, then what you did was you wrote about your current times and the recent past, and sometimes even the ancient past. But when you wrote about this, you wrote about it from the point of view of someone who lived prior to those times. So if you're writing about events in the 3rd century BC, you would start with events in the 5th or 6th century BC, and then move up to the 4th century, and then the 3rd century, and then present day, and then you would talk about the near future. But you would claim that the author was a prophet who lived back in the 6th or 7th century BC. And one of the easy ways that scholars use to date the authorship of these texts is to see when the prophecies start to go wrong. As long as these things are accurate, and what it is, they tend to be more accurate the closer to the time of the author they get. If it's written in the 3rd century, the details that are written about the 5th century will be sort of accurate. In the 4th century, they'll be more accurate. In the early 3rd century, even more so. In the late 3rd century, they'll be dead on. When they start talking about things in the 2nd century or the 1st century, they get completely off, uh, such as the destruction of the city of Tyre, how it would be completely destroyed, it would be burned to the ground, and it would never be rebuilt, and all this other stuff. And then that prophecy is later redacted to say, oh yeah, and kind of, by the way, it was rebuilt, but here's our explanation for that. Because what happens was they had this prophecy about the city being destroyed and never being rebuilt, and within the author's own lifetime, reconstruction had already begun. And so they, their inaccuracies help us to actually date these texts. So all of these, uh, all these prophetic works that all have names attached to them, they, were, they are all pseudonymous texts. They're all forgeries to be passed off as coming from a prophet. None of them said anything about the future, or at least none of them accurately said anything about the future. When they were talking about the future, they were usually talking about the author's past. Now, when it comes to uh, something like the Torah, 
which is supposedly written by Moses. That tradition wasn't attached to those books until centuries later. Nowhere in those books does it say that Moses wrote any of them. In fact, Genesis takes place centuries before he was born, and Deuteronomy continues on after Moses died. So, that idea, Moses was basically the main character for the majority of, of those five books, uh, you know, beginning with Exodus and ending with Deuteronomy. And so, people just called those the books of Moses, because the Torah, Genesis through Deuteronomy, were kind of collected as one big thing. And Moses is the main character in four of them, so they talk about it as the books of Moses. And later, the tradition that he wrote those books was attached to it. Uh, but again, those are completely anonymous, and uh, those come from a variety of sources as well. Uh, at least two and possibly four different sources for any of those books. Another thing is whenever we compare our oldest copies of the Hebrew Bible. These would be texts uh, such as the Septuagint, which is a Greek translation from the 2nd century BC, and scripts taken from the Dead Sea Scrolls, uh, the community at Qumran, which was discovered in the mid-20th century. When we take those, the, the Greek Septuagint and the Hebrew text from Qumran, and we compare them the Septuagint and the Qumran text, they still contain hundreds of discrepancies, but they are fairly close to one another. Uh, amazingly close, even though they were written in two completely different languages. But when we take either of those and compare them to the Masoretic text, which is the basis for... Uh, the Jewish Publication Society Tanakh, and the Old Testaments used for the King James Bibles and all of its derivatives, so all your Protestant Bibles. When you compare that to our Septuagint or the Qumran text, the differences between your modern Jewish Bibles, your Masoretic text, and our most ancient Bibles those differences number in the thousands. And so this shows that this idea that they were trying to preserve the text and copy it as accurately as possible is just a fable. They were making changes to it every step of the way. Uh, and to see one example of, of this, just grab your Old Testament and look for the height of Goliath in 1 Samuel. If it converts to nine and a half feet tall, that's a deliberate change made by uh, the, the Masoretic text to make Goliath bigger so that David's victory over him would be more miraculous. In our oldest copies, Goliath was about six foot seven or six foot nine. So... That's an easy way to tell if it's Masoretic text or not. And that's a great method of showing just how much they were willing to change things just to inflate the story. Also, if you read Deuteronomy 32.8 and it does not sound like polytheism, then you're reading something that came from the Masoretic text. Everything older shows that Yahweh had a dad. And he also had brothers, and those brothers ruled over the other nations of the world.